Hello, so this is a video I've been wanting to do for the last couple of weeks since I set up this stuff right here a couple of weeks ago over a couple of evenings. And it's pretty much just kind of talking about my experience and my findings with setting up uh, master clocks, primarily uh, clock 36, clock 46, into uh, the relay sets for these clocks, which are GMT34s. And yeah, it's uh, made by an idiot four idiots so likely there may be some corrections and also things that have been added to this so if there's anything you want to add or want to talk about regarding this leave the comments below so hopefully for a watcher that is trying to get their head around this kind of stuff well hopefully the video plus the comments below might be sufficient help for you to get it all plugged in but anyway let's uh, let's have a chat this is a master clock by Gents of Leicester, clock 36, and inside it you'll see the pendulum with all of the driving kind of malarkey inside. At the bottom of the pendulum there is a twisty thing that's basically a tiny little counterweight that makes you helps you that helps you adjust over a certain amount of time the actual overall speed that it's running at. Also you can add a few pennies on top if that is required, but I haven't even bothered fine-tuning this because it's not really set to like keep a decent time. Behind the pendulum you'll see there is a schematic of the master clock, it's got the, at the top there's all the inputs and the outputs, we'll have a look at those in a little bit, and all the wires going to all of the switches and the contacts and stuff with all of the spark quenching capacitors and stuff like that. Next up is this, this basically re-energizes the pendulum to keep on ticking. When it gets to a certain point, it causes this contact to flick, which turns on these electromagnets, which attracts the pendulum slightly to keep it pushing along and ticking along nicely. Above that we get to all of the pulse contacts. This one right here sends out a 6 second pulse. And then this one next to it is made to send out a 30 second pulse. If you look there are some deeper tooths. What happens are these things land into those deeper tooths which end up pushing these contacts here. These are exactly the same except the 6 second one has more deeper tooths and this one only has two deeper tooths. There's one there and there's one at the top which causes it to push this contact for 30 seconds. Woo! And then at the top you'll see these two. Each of these make contact every two seconds. So this one does every two seconds, this one does every two seconds. You put them together, you end up getting a pulse every second. So at the top you see they're wired together to just send out a pulse every one second. These big chunky mummers are the spark quenching capacitors and there's some resistors on top. You'll see these in the schematic at the bottom. And at the top is all the connections. You'll see this is a video by an idiot, so it's not the neatest job. But this is the one second, this is the six second, these are the 30 second ones, there's two of them. And then there's the negative of the battery, positive or earth. So earth is actually the positive voltage. And then there's the pendulum drive, which is the drive power that powers the re-energizing circuit. Also in this one added is a little lamp, it's got a resistor going to it to kind of limit the current going into it so it's a little bit dimmer than it would usually be. All of these wires from the clock 36 go through a multi-core cable that go up to the top one of these which is a GMT34, we'll have a look at this in a little second, these are the relay drivers that allow this to power a whole load of secondary clocks and a load of other things, we'll have a chat about that in a second. This little screw down at the bottom is connected to the wall, you can loosen it and then adjust the level of this, it takes a little bit of fine tuning to get it just ticking along nicely, then you tighten it up when it's in the right space to keep it going and working. This switch right here, when you flick it upwards, it advances all of the clocks that are connected to it, as you can see it just starts clicking over like these, and then the retired one is the one that stops it. So if you want to go backwards an hour, you flick it down here, wait an hour, if you want to go forwards an hour, you flick it up and then every second it flicks it along 30 seconds to go to the forward time zone or just fine tune it and stuff. This then goes up and heads into here. It says standby, that's because this standby and this regular would have been wired into two of those master clocks when in proper use and one of them would have been used just in case the other one stops working and stuff. So there's a backup in case it all goes a bit funky. It's got a nice cover on the front and you pull it off and then it shows all of the relays and stuff on the inside. What this does is it amplifies the signal that comes from the clock because if you plug clocks straight into the master clock, the switch contacts inside there wouldn't last very long because they'll be sparking all the time and stuff. This has the ability in its current state to drive up to 20 secondary clocks, I think. You'll notice there's some spare wires sitting here and there and there and this. That's because it is expandable and you can have it driving up to, I think, 80 
clocks. I may be wrong with that, but we'll have a look at the schematic in a second and that'll remind us of everything like that. BR is wired up to the master clock contact that drives it every second. CR drives it every six seconds. And then the AR and the DR are every 30 seconds. You'll notice there's two because one of them responds to the advanced switch and that's for the clocks. And the other one doesn't respond to the advanced switch and that's for other functions. And hopefully somebody will comment below what the other 30 second functions are and such. So, so AR is driven by the master clock and AR drives AP. AP's job is to drive the clocks. You can see they flick along like that. And if I click it, uh, it's wired up to also drive DP, which drives another 10 clocks. So this drives 10 clocks and this can drive 10 clocks. Right now I've got these lamps wired in via resistors to reduce the current to flash every time. A one second pulse goes, six second pulse and 30 second pulse. And then look at my dodgy sign writing. It's not the best, but at least it shows you what it's doing. Next to that are the fuses for the various functions within here. Uh, you could probably get away with not using these and just wiring them straight to one fuse. This is so if there's one of the shorts and a clock or something, it blows and it doesn't damage and stop everything else. At the back is a bunch of contacts. They're actually numbered one over two, I think 50. And they will make sense when we have a look at the schematic below. You'll notice these big resistors here. These resistors are for the box right there. This is the schematic. It's uh, available online at places. Um, when I purchased the first GMT34, I got it from an eBay seller called New Sandals. Uh, he was kind enough to print it out for me and I haven't looked since. So when you see this schematic, it's more than just the GMT34. Uh, over here, this little box here is actually the clock number 36. That's the one that was, that's the master clock, this square right here. And then it connects via here you'll see there's a little load of notes on it like 30 second 30 second one second six second negative voltage minus of the pendulum and positive of the pendulum this is the pendulum drive so these wire over via these you can ignore these because these are another part that is for the switch over circuitry i haven't i haven't got one of these so that would be uh, used to switch over between the two clocks the standby and the regular i as far as i understand um, so imagine this 30 second skips that switch right there and wires straight over to this which is actually the pin that is numbered number 37 on the clock 34. By the way this square right here uh, and minus this so this square right here is the clock 34 that we have so we'll have a look at that in a sec. So number 37 the pin 37 what you do is you wire the 30 second connector on the uh, master clock up to 37. What 37 does is it drives the DR relay uh, coil. So DR is connected to 37 via a 5000 ohm uh, relay and then that wires over to this which is um, tag number 46 on the uh, GMT34 and you connect that over to ground. Note 7, it's got a note so we'll have a look at the note. It says Numbered terminals O are part of the clock's GMT34 terminal. 46 supplies earth to the whole unit. So 46 is the earth for the unit. What I've done wiring wise with this is I've got pretty much I've got a um, I've got a, a modern kind of laptop. Uh, well, actually, it's an LED uh, power supply. It's a 48 volt LED power supply. This isn't actually a 48 volt one. It's, look, it's still going, but it's just an example of what it is. Uh, so what I've wired up is this to this. You've got to remember that it is actually backwards and you might get away with wiring it the other way around possibly because there's no diodes in here and all of the capacitors are bipolar so you might have luck actually wiring it the other way around but I wouldn't recommend it you do what you want so whenever it's got ground or earth you actually wire that to positive 48 volts and then when it connects to something like this if you look there it's not actually connected to ground it's connected this is a bat battery sign battery symbol so that, that black chunk next to that is the negative of the battery and that wires to the ground the 48 volts so where so, so the minus of the 48 volts the ground of this so whenever it's ground on here it's earth on here wire it to the plus 48 volts and if it's wired to this side of it the battery side then wire it to negative yeah okay that's the same it's a kind of a standard that is um you know old school cars minis and stuff they're negative earth negative positive earth i mean uh, and this is telephone exchange and stuff i remember somebody telling me the pros of that and the positives and uh, i cannot remember it for the life of me so if anybody can remind us of how that is then please comment below 
Okay, so pin 37, wires to 30. Um, then there's another 30 seconds. So the 30 second at the top that wires into 37, that's exchange equipment. This doesn't listen to that switch, that advanced switch. So the clocks wire in by this 30 second. You see it's, it's now switched up to the advanced and uh, retard switch. That wires up to this, which means that you can advance the clock. So AR. AR is the relay for that. And that's um, uh, tag, tag number five. So that wires in and that, that means that that, that will uh, click every 30 seconds AR when you click that. Or if you flick up the advance, it will do it every one second, for instance. Uh, the one second wires up to the fourth uh, connector on the back of the GMT-34 and then the six seconds wires up to tag number six. Ooh, this thing right here is a battery jack. That means you can plug in things like soldering irons and stuff into it. You'll notice that it's going to be connected to its own fuse. So you'll notice that the ground, which is actually positive 48 volts in our instance with the laptop charger, is um, plugged in already. That means that this is already connected. So the ground of the battery jack is connected. And then 50 you wire the tag 50 on the back of the GMT4. You could either wire it to the ground of the laptop charger or if you're feeling fancy you could get one of those fuse boxes and then add a fuse in between the 50 and that. So if there's ever a problem in the battery jack, let's say you plug it in and there's soldering iron shorts or something, that'll go pop, poppity pop, pop, pop. So it's up to you how, how dangerous of a life you want to live. So we run down now to this wire right here. This is wired up to number three of the GMT34 and you'll notice this, this is connected via a resistor and then that connects over to pin number 10. Pin number 10 is then connected to a fuse on the fuse box. So you will put another fuse on the fuse box or just straight to the minus if you're feeling fruity and then you wire that to 10 and that will give ground to this. It's wired for a separate fuse so that means if one of the if there's a problem with one of the switches or some wire here or something that will go pop. But the battery jack for instance it will still work. So this fuse actually drives two resistors here so there's R2 and R3 um, R2 uh, is the one that's going to connect to the power that sends all of this stuff to battery sorry because I'm getting confused now because that is positive 48 volts and that is battery let's just say for now from the for the future uh, earth and battery that's the one that's the one okay we wire battery via a fuse into R2 which is into R2 which is then connected to pin 3 on the GMT34 so you wire pin 3 of GMT34 over to the negative tab onto the clock so negative tab connects a wire over to here but then also pin 10 to power it you need to put that to battery on a fuse we'll have a look at note 5 so note 5 resistance to be in accordance with table, the unit is equipped for 50 volt working. So this means that if you get a standard GMT-34 that's not been messed around with and it looks like it's kind of by the book, this kind of thing, well actually you don't need to do anything. You could just ignore that note and you could just wire it straight in. R2 would do the right job. However, this is made for 50 volt working. You could potentially modify the resistors that are inside the GMT-34. We'll have a look at a sec because they're actually very well labeled. You know what they mean, but R2, so R2, R1 and R5 to R11, that's not what we need. R2's down there. So if you want it to run on 24 volts, you don't need a resistor, it says nil. If you want it to run on 40 volts, you need a 300 ohm and 60 volts, you need a thousand ohm. So whatever is in there right now is wired in to run at 50 volts. So we don't really need to worry about that because we're running it with a 48 volt laptop charger thingamajiggy, uh, LED charger. So that's for that resistor. And then this resistor here, R3, which is the same deal, note free resistor coil. This R3 resistor coil goes into the minus of the pendulum drive. R3 over here, you look at R3 um, and you can change it. If you're running on 24 volts, you change R3 to a 50 ohm. You change it if you're 40 volts, 90 ohm, 30 volts, 50 volts. I think that says 50 volts. Yeah, it's 50 volts, sorry. 110 and then 125 for 60 volts. But because this was this GMT-34 was running at 50 volts, it's a standard unmolested one, then this is just, it's fine. You don't need to really worry about it, it's done. So wire pin two up to the minus of the pendulum drive. And then um, pin 25, which is another ground, another earth, and that wires up to the positive of the pendulum drive. Remember, the earth is positive, so the positive of the pendulum drive. And that will drive the pendulum. So what you need to do to get this talking to this is wire number 37 up to the 30 seconds, number five to the 30 second clock, 
number four to the one second of the master clock, number six to the six second of the master clock, number 46 to the positive voltage of the uh, charger or whatever you're plugging into, which is earth because it's negative voltage. And then if you want the battery, uh, you plug uh, a, um, the fuse, uh, a, a, neg a ground or battery in this instance, up to 50. So that's uh, ground of this up to the 50 pin. So you can wire that and then via a fuse. And then number three, which is the power that goes over into these wires on the other side to drive the relays, that goes into number three. But then also remember that you need to connect a fuse or just the battery up to 10, pin 10. So pin 37, five, four, six, three, 10. And pin two to drive the pendulum, the recharging circuit, and then also the ground. These two could actually be connected already, I think possibly, but you just wire that up. So that automatically, number 25 automatically wires that up to that internally into it. So 25, two, three, 10, 6, 4, 5, 37, and 46. If you've got all of those wired in, this and this should start clicky clocking together. But that's not the end of the story, no, no, no. So the bottom one's here, the DR contact of the DR relay, the BR1 contact, that's the switch on the relay to the uh, CR there and CR2, CR1 and 2 because there's two sets of switches on each, two sets of springs or pads or whatever they're called on the relay and that'll connect over to here and we don't really need to worry about this in this instance because that's going off to things for the exchange equipment to send off timings to this, that and the other so you can ignore that stuff potentially but then we go over to this part of the circuit we can ignore this because this is add-on these are extra add-ons that would have meant that the GMT34 could drive more clocks than it would be originally sold as originally kind of you know, uh, out of the factory as. So right now, these ones I've got as standard, so we haven't got this bit, just ignore it. And you've got this thing right here. So this is the part that connects up to the clock. So um, this earth is connected there, they're connected internally, and then that's connected to BR2. So BR2 is the one second pulse. We do, If you've got one second secondary clocks, one, se one second slave clocks, they will wire over via R4 up to pin nine. So the output of BR2 is pin nine if you've got clocks that run on 30, on, on one second pulses. In my instance, I've got clocks that run on 30 second pulses. So that's where this comes in. Uh, this is when it gets a not not complicated but it just gets a bit funky so ar which is this uh, relay here that's wired up to the switches the um, advanced switch and stuff like that that wires up and these pads click and that is sends ap which is the relay above ar sends that to ground however ap is not powered yet what we need to do is wire it in via its own fuse which you don't have to you can get a bit dangerous uh, not dangerous but you know you could live life dangerously if you you know you think it'll be fine so pin one you could wire up to battery to power AP. That's that re relay there. And this relay basically boosts the signal from the AR relay to be able to drive um, a large number of clocks. Yeah? <laughs> so AP, then if you've got the fuse wired in via pin one, if that is connected to battery, then that means this will start clicking. And you can wire um, 10 clocks up to pin 11 in parallel, you can wire 10 clocks up to pin 11, and you can also wire 10 clocks up to pin 12. So uh, pin 11 goes through the first switch contact of that relay, AP1, and then pin 12 is going through the second set of switch contacts. So that means that, yeah, it says you can wire up to one to 10. So you can wire 20 clocks in, if you add 20 clocks, up to these two sets of contacts. Remember that these clocks also need to be powered at the other at the other end. That's when you wire it up to another fuse if you're feeling fruity and that connects up to battery. You'll see it goes through its own fuse again. I haven't bothered doing that. I've just wired fuses into here. So that's battery connects up to here and then that runs through the clocks and then ideally through pin 11 and then when that switch connect contacts gets placed, it goes over to earth, creating the loop, if you will, and then it causes the clocks to go forwards a little bit, you know? That was probably a bit of gobbledygook, but this is just my experience for idiots for idiots. So, in a nutshell, to wire this up to the master clock and the clocks, you wire all of these wires that we spoke about earlier, uh, which is pin 37, pin 5, pin 4, pin 6, pin 3, pin 2, 
Oh yeah, pin 46 to make the connection complete and then pin 25. If all of those are wired in, should start clicking. And then you also need to connect pin one to make AP start clicking, which is driven by AR, as you can see AR there. So pin one, clock, clock, clock. And that will cause the clocks to go over that connected to either pin 11 or pin 12. This stuff right here is what I was talking about, that you can add more relays and stuff. So BP, which is means that AR can also drive extra relays here that can drive extra clocks. So if you wired in an extra relay, like BP here, that is connected in parallel to AP, which is driven by this relay, then that would drive another 20 clocks right here. And then CP, that would wire another 20 clocks here. And then DP, that would, that would wire another 20 clocks here. But you know, 20 is more than enough for most instances, I guess, nowadays when you're just wiring it up for a bit of fun. So unless you have literally got a wall of 80 clocks, well, you know. <laughs> when I started looking at this, it was a little bit gobbledygook and it didn't really make sense. I didn't even realize that these numbers here were actually the pins on the GMT-34. Now I know that, it's made it so much easier and everything lines up perfectly. So yeah, no, all in all, it is paint by numbers. As long as you get the pins right, and as long as you get the connections right, like all of the little numbers, it should start clicking away. But remember, first step would be wiring the master clock to get these relays clicking, and then wiring AP, and then that's it, yeah. Then you should be good to go. So these are the relays, and the relays are labelled on the front. You'll notice this, this I've clonked in to uh, kind of reduce the current to go onto one of these lights. But you'll notice that a lot of the relays aren't included in here. That's because these are for the extra clocks that are wired in. That's where all the capacitors would go. This is where the relays would go, the extra relays. So hopefully it makes a little sense. AR, BR, CR and DR are directly driven by the master clock. And then AR, when you click on it, actually drives AP. And also in this instance, AP is also connected in parallel to DP there. So you notice when I click AR, that relay goes as well. And this connects to another 20 clocks. So 20 clocks here. So 20 clocks here, 10 on each of these contacts, 20 clocks there, each contact, and then uh, BP and CP would be wired here for even more clocks when you want to add it. And you know, as you can see, all of the wires are there. You've just got to add the relays to add, you know, for ease of addition. Currently, this is driving a couple of clocks here and a couple of clocks over there. And also it's driving the visitor counter uh, every six seconds. So the six second pulse here, actually drives the visitor counter over at the front of the museum and what that means is it stops the Nixie tubes from burning out. So this directly is connected to the visitor counter. This next one would be the same if it was wired into another clock 36 but this one is actually wired into a clock 46 that we'll look at now. Let's see if I could get this off one handed. Oh dear. Whoa, falling off the ladder. So as far as I'm aware, these aren't originally intended to be used with the clock 46, but you can wire it in such a way that they work sufficiently anyway. You'll notice the BR is still going off every one second. DR is doing something different. What this does is actually, there's this thing right here, which is tone control. Um, somebody mentioned what it was, and I, I can't actually remember what the fudge it was. But what this does is it sends out a pulse every seconds for three seconds, and then stops for three seconds. I've wired that into DR, so it goes one, two, and then stops for a bit. And then does it again? One, two, three. Oh, mine does four for some strange reason. And then AR runs AP and DP every six seconds. I wired it up because it sounds nice. I haven't actually wired this into anything yet. So this sends out a six second pulse and a tone control pulse. In order to make this work properly, wire the minus and the plus backwards to each other, and then it'll actually directly work with this. If you wired it um, the other way around, it would start shorting all over the place. So you can do it and it will drive. It's just, you just wire the power backwards and it will work with this with minimal modification. So that sends out a second pulse on every full swing. You'll see it's a lot smaller. And then this one does a swing every two seconds. So one second swing, two second swing. Uh, if you have noticed anything that's a little bit weird or you have anything to add, then please comment below. And if you're watching this with the hopes of doing this stuff as well, then check the comments as well because there's likely gonna be more helpful things. And yeah, if you find this video and it's helped you kind of wire this stuff in, then please let us know in the comments below. If you wanna see this stuff and a load of other stuff, then come over to this museum's not obsolete we're open every weekend actually in the summer holidays there's some Wednesdays as well information is linked below and yeah I'm Sam this is all the clickety clickety clack clacks and yeah have a lovely time